So, yeah, it's picking up my voice. So your hero's journey story. The <laughs> 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 the start of every every hero's journey is um, what I believe is a place of pain and discomfort, a place where we're not we might not be happy with our life, a um, place of you know despair and disparity, and we may feel like we're at odds with the world, and um, this really leads us to you know, seeking a new life or a new way of living, you know. If I was to ask you if, if you had a moment in life where you felt like that, what would it be? Mm. I, I just think I had a couple, but one, one is kind of the most obvious one is when that, you know, those weeks leading up to my back surgery uh-huh. in 2009. So 2008, 2009. Um, I had a, a similar moment um, in maybe 2001 or so, but I would say 2009 was the more, uh, yeah, was the one with bigger impact. Yeah. So what, what happened there then during that time? Um, I was working for a startup company. I was kind of living in the U.S., but not fully yet. So you know, I didn't have a visa, and, and yeah. was still working on that. So. Um, was not fully living in Switzerland anymore, but not really living in the U.S. either. Mm. Um, didn't quite get my salary every every month because we had from now on then troubles financially quite a bit actually. Yeah. And so it was financially not secure. I didn't quite know where I was really living. So obviously I didn't really have a uh, private life. Um, just worked a lot. And company future wasn't secure, and um, and so yeah, and then I was just working twenty four seven, and didn't have didn't put a lot of time into my health, yeah. um, and had back pain for months and months at a time, um, and then and then up to the point of where I ended up in the hospital with a, an emergency surgeon. Oh. And then I was back, so it's uh, a, you know, herniated disc. Oh wow, that's really painful, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's extremely painful. Yeah. And so I was in the hospital for a few weeks, and then at, at one point, you know, I got home and then back in, and that was it, and then they had to do surgery. And so I was in the hospital for, and rehab for a few months, actually. Probably two months or so. Yes. Yeah. So that was, um, I've seen the original world there, but that was a, was that a calling of, calling within you to say, look, I can't do this anymore, you know? Yeah, that, that was very clear from that moment. I mean, it was kind of clear leading up to it, but I, I didn't know how to get out, yeah. and what to change, and how to change it, and then when I woke up, I, I still remember, you yeah, know, I remember the room, I the view, how I was lying there, and then I, I just knew I think that was my internet, so okay. we're back. Okay, we're back. Yeah, so I've always, uh, I've always been big on leading a balanced life, so you know, I've been enjoying yoga and yoga and pilates and all this, and, um, and I knew I was not walking my talk. Mm. That was the biggest part that really kind of tore me apart. Um, and yeah, so, so that really was a very defining moment, like redefining how, what does work mean to me, how do I engage in business, um, what kind of a 
relationships are important in my life. Um, yeah. All of this. Yeah. Awesome. So that was um, that was your call to adventure. But I remember you saying just a moment ago you didn't know how to you didn't know how to create that. You felt like you didn't know how to create that within yourself. Like um. Did you say that just right again? Something like that? Um, well, I didn't know. Yeah, I felt it leading up to to it, but um, but I didn't know how to get out of that situation. Okay. Or what to do really with with this knowing of this is not working for me. Um, but you know how it is sometimes you know something is not working, but it, because I didn't have a a vision of what would what would it look like if it would work. Yeah. What is it that I really want? I yeah, I didn't know what to do, so I didn't do anything. I know what you mean. Um, um, would you say, in some respects, that was that was your refusal to call because? Oh yeah. You know, because yeah. your ego like got in the way, like not not in terms of an egoistic personality, but you know, we all have the things like we don't believe we can. Our refusals, um, you know, fear based or. The yeah. belief base, you know. Yeah, not knowing what to do or also saying, hey, maybe it's too early to give up. And and I think that is one of the things I've seen as a pattern quite often in my life that I always say, I feel something is not working. And then I'm like, no, but I can't fix this or I'm not giving up just yet or I need to give it my all before I give up. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it, yeah. Like it, just speaking it out, you know, I'm, I'm realizing I've never been in my life in a situation where I say, "Oh, I wish I had done more." Never. And still, I always have this belief. Of, but I've been in the situation that many times where I said, "I, you know, I stuck around for too long." Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting. Mm. We always feel like we need to just keep it, keep going until, you know, forever, you know. <laughs> But that's good. So that was your refusal. Was um, was there any was there any anybody in your life that was you know the guidance and the inspiration to to start start you in a process of believing in yourself in, in terms of creating your own vision and creating your own life? Um, <coughs> it wasn't like at this stage. It wasn't a a particular person. Yeah. Um, I think it was many people leading up to it. Yeah. Uh, but not, not like when I when I was in the hospital. It wasn't like that one person. What really helped though was the support I received from my family, my family and and a couple of very close friends. Yeah. That made all the difference. Like especially, I really especially my my sisters and my parents. Yeah. And so it wasn't about. See, the inspiration was not like I need to change my world, but I knew they were there for me no matter what I do, yeah. and that gave me a lot of strength. Excellent. Yes, no, I love that, and I said to said to a lot of people over the well over the past couple of days actually who I've been going through here is January. You know, it says mentor and helper there, but I don't I don't believe the mentor and helper really does come until later. I think. You know, you might have heard of the Threshold Guardians. <coughs> no. Um, um, what, what, are, what are these? So we've got all the archetypes in our life. And the archetypes, I believe once we understand all of our archetypes, and um, whether they're good or bad archetypes, which I'll go through in a bit, then um, we can really, um, you know, create our life and create our journey, you know. But um, a Threshold Guardian is is someone that helps you cross the threshold of a venture into, into the next stage. So, like with your family, you know, they they were supporting you no matter what, you know, no matter what it was. So, they were your inspiration and guidance in a, in a way that wasn't inspiring you to move forward, but making you realise that, you know, no matter what happens, they'll be there for me, sort of thing. Um, so, that's, that's sort of, crossing the first threshold. Um, <coughs> and um, the crossing the first threshold part is is really, um, you know, it's, you know it, could, it could seem like a very small stage, but it's quite a big stage, I'd say. Because 
for you is stepping from the world in which you're comfortable in, or in some some respects you weren't comfortable in there at all, obviously because it caused your cause your, your back pain in your your surgery. Um, but you're crossing from the original world in which you know to the unknown world in which you don't know. So you're now stepping into. I know. Have you seen the Wizard of Oz? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's where Dorothy, at the beginning of the movie, it's black and white. And then, uh, then when the house moves, and it goes into a colour world, you know. Mm -hmm. So, this is a whole new world at which you, at which you're standing in now, that you're, it's unknown, as I said, it's completely unknown, this is where you face your, your ordeal. Um, and Joseph Campbell describes this whole process as, um, Trails by initiation. So this is your initiation become, to becoming who you are today, you know. Um, and stage six is your load of trials, um, which this is broken down into test allies and enemies. That's what, it, that's what the, the depiction is today. But I think load of trials is, is, is what it is really. <laughs> so that's what it is on the tenth sort of thing. Um, so if I was to ask you, like, once you started, you know, trying to forge your own path or taking, take your own path and journey, was it, was there any challenge in obstacles you could come up against yourself? Um. If you're progressing. Yes, I'm progressing. Well, what was challenging was to, to, to really put that vision into action in terms of, well, you yeah, want to, to keep it up, you know, you know, like whenever things get, get also I still today, when things get challenging, mm -hmm. especially from, let's say, either a financial perspective or there's something that, that I need to take care of and, and the business is growing or, or however I, I feel like I'm living my purpose, um, I, I know by working more and working harder, uh, I can get to some sort of solution. But this is not how I want to do it. So every time I'm at this at this stage of either things get difficult or I'm about to go to the next level, yeah. um, I don't trust my I don't trust this this knowing that it can work differently. Like that, what, what I had in this moment when I was you know in the hospital, I'm like. I know it can work differently. I know it it can come. I can come more from the heart. I can have a life that is more balanced. Um, yeah. You can do business uh, with compassion and love, and it doesn't have to be. You know, so I knew it, and I knew it. I know. I I also now know it's the truth. And yet, in these moments when I personally feel very challenged, yeah. I kind of push myself again, which is the very thing that got me into that situation. Yeah. But it, it's just because I kind of know by pushing, that's the way I've learned it, it works. Yeah. And by, by stepping back and, and having more trust or really going with my intuition, um, yeah, it's, it requires more trust. And these are the difficult moments. It's obviously, it's the, it's the very base of what trust is. You, you, you believe in something that you've not seen yet or, you know, yeah. having faith into some, in something. It's interesting, isn't it, that trust, you know, having trust in yourself that everything's going to be alright and, um, you know, trusting your intuition and, and, you know, following your own in, inner guidance, you know, as you progress, you know. Yeah. Um, but I find that's some of my challenges as well. My, that's my internal challenge as well at times, you know, believing in the th that things are going to be alright, you know. Um, what, what other, what other challenges would you say you you'd come across because I'd say that's quite a big one in, in a big learning there I'd imagine yeah. mm. um, well external challenges things like people um, I've I've quite often you know I, I love working with people and I'd love to have a team around me but I attract I often attract people who want something from me more than 
uh, want to build a, a, a partnership that is based on giving and receiving. So I feel people are often attracted by, by my energy and by my drive. Yeah. Um, but then I don't, yeah, I don't feel it's, it's even somehow. Um, okay. so that, and that is, it's a real challenge. It's a challenge for my business also because I'm not quite working in the constellation that I'd like to work, but I, I somehow don't find the right people. Yeah. Um, so, so that's. Would you say like, um, in terms of, in terms of your giving perspective, um, you are sometimes feel taken advantage of in situations because you're more of a giving party and you don't have the balance of receiving in there. Yeah. That's very much music. Or, you know, or asking, or asking for it. It's kind of this, also yeah. this skill about when do you ask for receiving or, uh, I have an extremely, uh, good and big network, for example. Yeah. I constantly connect people and they have, they have real benefits through the connecting either a job or some work or some money or what not comes out of it. And I've never asked anyone for something in return. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and I've realized, and I've known this for 10 years or so, that there's people that have a business around doing that. Because building my network requires a lot of time and energy. Mm-hmm. And so at which stage do you then say, you yeah, know, I'm happy to connect you, but, you know, yeah. and what is it that you can do for me? Definitely. I, I think that's important to have that balance, you know. I, I think that's, again, something, something I've struggled with. Um, I remember, like, when I was a lot younger and I used to go around my, my friend's house for, for dinner, you know, when I was at school and things. And my, my, uh, my friend always used to say, oh, do you, do you want dinner or do you want, um, do you want something to drink and stuff? I said, no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Um, because I wasn't open to receiving, and it was very interesting. And uh, looking at a business sense now as well, I I have found that I have been like that at, at times with with business as well. I say no, don't worry, that's fine. But I think it's important to have that balance, isn't it? You know, yeah. And noticing yeah. that. Um, but I thought I'd share that because it's it's very it's very interesting how we how we tend to do that. You know. Um, and I think naturally when, when we're in business and, and we, we, you know, go out our way to do, do stuff for people or we're in certain circumstances, um, people will see the good nature and take advantage of situations because you allow it to, to happen, you know. Um, so there, there's some of, some of your tests and challenges. Um, so would you say for both of them, it's still something that you're internally working on in some, on some part or some level. Yeah, yeah yes, absolutely. Okay. Good. So that now brings us to, we're not on the approach yet, but we're on to the allies and enemies. Um, so the allies are, um, people like our mentors, um, who provide us with our, you know, guidance on our physical journey and our emotional journey. Um, they're also, I, I usually only describe like two main archetypes here, but there's, a, there's about seven or eight that, that are really, I believe, really important. Um, first one is the mentor, which is the physical mentor, which is, as I said, help you on your physical journey. So, was there anybody that's, would you say that was, um, you know, someone that, someone that knew, knew the ropes, knew what to do, and have been there before, and they were sort of your guiding helping hand to grow your business and help you progress? Mm. I've had, yeah, well, yeah. I've had several mentors for that, um, but not, not, like, I have, it's interesting, like, I have a few people, like, a few mentors that I've had since I'm, Twenty, so for for nearly or for twenty years now, but they are kind of, especially one that I'm thinking about. He he's not, you know, one of these that are around all the time. But whenever I talk to him once or twice a year, then it's really significant the feedback I get from him or how he helps me. And just knowing that he's there is is really good. 
And then there was, after that, that significant moment, there was people that I surrounded myself with and that helped me. But they, I think, they only just always helped me for a little while. So there wasn't someone who was there for a longer period of time to really help me with the business, growing it the way I, I wanted it. And, yeah, I, I only feel now in the last year or so I've finally found people that that I can really do that with and that are around in that sense much more. Yeah. So, so those mentors were more so, you know, your, your larger mentor that was you spoke to, mm-hmm. you know, a little more infrequently but offered that feedback. Um, but then, would you say the, the other li- smaller mentors were specifically to guide you through certain challenges? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, and another ally is, another archetypal ally is um, what I would say is the divine feminine. You know, and the divine feminine is is um, you know what do we think about as a as a divine feminine anyway? Someone that's someone that's nurturing, someone that's a, a support mechanism for you, and at the same time, someone that can help you self reflect. You know, so I believe whether we're male or female or whoever we are, we need a we need a divine feminine in our life or someone that holds those traits. They can help us self-reflect, nurture us, so that we feel supported. Um, you know, so that we we don't feel alone on our path, because it is a lonely yeah. journey when we're on our well, we are on our own, I believe, on our, in our business. Yeah. Yeah. Was there anybody like that as well, or would you say they're very much similar to your mentors? Mm. I did have someone, and with her, interestingly, we started then a business together, and it didn't work out. So, so that was that was a really difficult moment. Um, that was probably a year after, so in 2010, yeah. Um, but I do have these kind of people around me, and now I would say since three years, I have I've never had so many mentors in my life and so many people that are really looking out for me. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> it does feel good, mm-hmm. yeah. right? I found that as well recently. It's you know, there's so many people that, that are out there to support you, you know. Mm-hmm. And can give you the guidance. Um, so when we look at enemies, um, enemies aren't really enemies, but enemies are what I would say are people that you know, they they want you to succeed but they have their own intentions. Um, so you know uh, you're probably familiar with network marketing. I think everybody mm-hmm. in the business world is. Um, yeah. And network marketing is great sometimes. You know, you've got the, you've got some good products, you've got some good services. But often, you know, they, they come at a time where, you know, throughout a journey we have temptations. And temptations, um, appear when, when we're in our deepest, darkest hole, you know. Um, like Joseph Campbell says, the cave we fear to end holds the treasure we seek, you know. So we're in our d- deepest, darkest pain, and then temptation comes along. It um, tempts us into this new way of thinking or, or new life. So I believe often network marketers can come in with the temptation of um, the fact that they can make you financially free, financially free, or they can, they can, you know, you can travel around the world and, and, um, you know, I know, I know you've, put, you, you've done that before this anyway. Um, but, you know, they offer, they offer you, you know, a golden nugget, but it's not really your path. It's not your path to take. Um, so, often you have these monetary temptations, or Joseph Campbell describes them as the other side is sexual temptations as well. But in business, I would say the sex, sex, sexual temptations are more so the golden nuggets or the bright and shiny objects, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, this is going to get you this, you know, but it's not, again, it's not lying with you. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know if you've seen The Matrix. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the, the guy called Cypher? Um, yeah. So Cypher was the archetypal um, shapeshifter, which, which is um, the character. And um, his role was, you know, to 
to give Neo some guidance. So he he was made to look like a mentor to to Neo, but obviously he has he had his own intentions to to hand Neo over to Agent Smith. You know, so yeah. that's that's um, the shapeshifters in our life. You know, would you would you identify with some shapeshifters that may have come along that have, that had their own intentions for you? <laughs> I think to, to some extent, um, well, I don't know, I'm not quite sure whether they fit in there, but, but you know, as much as I said, my family is, are the ones that are, that are, that were really there for me and that, that who are there for me, yeah. I think for them it's really difficult to grasp what is it that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So they have tried at times to, to say, wouldn't it be better to just have a dog, like something that, if they didn't say it that way, but you know, something that we understand, like have mm-hmm. a role at uh, a company and do marketing for them. Or yeah. So when I have stations with them, I feel still to this day that I always have to justify why I do what I do and, and how I do what I do. Yeah. So... See, they kind of try to help me, but they have their own intention of what they think a happy and good life looks like. That's good. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so there I can see that a little bit. And, and I, I do have to say I'm quite open at moments for these shiny bright objects, the next, yeah. next best idea. And so especially in the marketing world or in the online marketing world. Mm, yeah. Um, and some of them have worked out like, fantastic for me like for example uh, Brendan Burchard I love what he does I have learned so much from him he made a huge difference in my life Mm. Uh, and others didn't work out at all Mm. right because their approach is just not aligned with what I do and I yet I could have maybe figured that out earlier and I still fell for a program I did or some coaching or something yeah I think the bright and shiny objects are good um but I, I always think, like, are they aligned with what I want to create? You know, that's the only thing that I think about. So, bright and shiny objects are good in some respects. Because I've done them all as well, you know, I've done loads of, you know. Um, and some of them are good and some of them aren't, you know. And, and I think now I realise which ones are the right ones for me and which ones, which ones aren't. But in some respects we can't know that until we try them. Um, but in some, res- in other respects you think, Hmm. They've got a very different approach to me. Yeah. So it's probably not a line with who I am. So. Yeah. I, so. I thought I'd mention that, Sue. So. Mm. Um, I love writing shiny objects. I get caught up with them all the time. <laughs> um, this, it's all about new technologies, isn't it? New ways of doing things and yeah. new approaches. Um, so stage, stage seven is the approach, and the approach is, um, have you seen Avatar the movie? Yeah, three times. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen it so many times as well. I love that movie. It's my favourite movie. So. Um, but you know when the stage in the movie where Sigourney Weaver sadly dies? Yeah. Yes. Um, I would always say that's the approach stage of the journey. Um, and this is this is where Sam Worthington um, comes back. He's with. Um, He's with the avatars and sadly obviously Sigourney Weaver dies. Um, but he's at the approach stage of his journey where he's um, self-reflecting. He's looking back on his past, looking back on all, all that he's learned. And um, within stage six he went through his test allies and enemies. Whereby um, he learned how to fly, he learned how to yeah. fight, he learned all the things he needed to in order to become a hero, you could say. <laughs> Um, but the approach is all about the self-reflection and bringing all of what you've learned together. So, um, so getting prepared for the final ordeal, which is stage eight. But if I was to ask you whether there was a, there was a time within your growth when everything sort of shifted and sort of came together for you, can you pinpoint the moment? Yeah, it must have been very recent. I think. Um, probably, probably 
two years ago or so. Mm -hmm. What is it now? Yeah. If I was to ask you, what, what were those shifts? Um, like this, this real belief, not not kind of an intellectual belief, but the deep down belief that I am here to make a huge difference and. And um, that I, I have, you know, that I have played way too small in the past. Um, sometimes, be, and and I, I, for example, I honor very much if people say, "Well, I love working one on one, and I have, I don't know, a, a coaching practice somewhere, and I work with people and I change their lives." My skill set is to work with big groups, yeah. and I'm very comfortable speaking uh, in front of hundreds or thousands of people. And, uh, but I've not honored that. And it's also nothing that the universe just gave to me by chance. Mm. Other people don't have it, you know, they work better one on one. And, and so that, that is something that I've realized and that I just own now and I feel, and I, it's not, nothing I brag about. It's just, for me, it's just a fact. I just enjoy working with large groups of people. Mm. That, that's for example. That's yeah. who you are, isn't it now? Yes, yeah, who you've become, you know, it's who you're comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and realizing, I said that on a, uh, an interview the other day, uh, in the past I always thought, oh, I'm interested in so many things, and I'm like a generalist, and you're supposed to be an expert, and you know, and, and I, I, I really, I realized for the work I do right now, helping people step into their own power and actually create a talk or, you know, have that impression, uh, that expression of it, it serves me really well to be a generalist because I can I can get into other people's shoes and and when you create a program you need to be interested in many different topics. So I feel myself as a curator of ideas and a curator of, of thought leaders. Um, and therefore I've just turned what 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 I what I always heard people say is a weakness turn into a strength. Yeah. I think um I think the whole hero's journey is about sharing your vulnerabilities and, you know, and allowing them to become your strength because, you know, we have, we have things we're good at, things we're not so good at, you know, and, um, it's alright to, it's alright to share that, you know, and it's alright to share the vulnerable part of your journey. You know? yeah. but, uh, that's cool, I, I love, I love public speaking and speaking to large groups. Um, I haven't spoke to the thousands yet, but, um, I'm on my way, so. Yeah. So that was your that was your big shift in your your um your approach. Yeah, but, but, but you know it, it really came from from a spiritual shift. So it, it's not a it's not a business shift or anything. It just it really came from from discovering my dharma and, and yeah. having my teachers also yeah. supporting me a lot with that, understanding the law of karma better, understanding how how um, the more people you impact in a positive way. Yeah, the more uh, positive karma you accumulate. Yeah, yeah. So I do encourage also, uh, that's why I also I'm so keen on encouraging people. Even if you feel a little uncomfortable in front of groups, if you can make an impact to 10 people instead of one person, why would you not make it to 10 people? Yeah. And if it's your own fear holding you back, now then just work on it. Because yeah. um, And that's where that shift came from. So that was a fair question. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's not for me so yeah. much, but it, it's more like it's not—it's not so much a shift of oh, I know what I want to do in, in this life, or it's it, or uh, this is how I work in my business. It, it's it's kind of this even this this urge, this spiritual urge of oh, I I understood something about the law, of the universe, yeah. and knowing it, you know, I have to act on it. And again, I love it. I think um, most people do see this as a physical journey, but I think more importantly, it is, it is that emotional journey and emotional shifts and spiritual shifts. Because once you get to that approach, it's you know, it's not it's not the physical bringing things together. It's it's like you know what you feel inside and what sh what shift you feel inside, like that internal you know real belief and real like you say, karma of the universe, you know. Um, 
Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a spiritual journey, isn't it? It's not, it's not, um, not specifically physical, really. Um, so once you once you realise that from from that moment forward, you know, how did everything change, and what did you put into place within your business? It's easier to take action somehow, um, with just much more clarity. Um, um, what else changed? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm more confident, and I, and it's easier to. It, it's not always easy, but it becomes more. Yeah, it becomes easier to take decision in terms of knowing. You know, what is what is good for me? What is not good for me? Where do I put my energy? Where do I, do I put my time? Yeah. And that's ultimately what it's about. Like, where do I put my resources? And that has really helped me with that. So, if I was to ask you to go back to your your challenges in terms of your trust, you know, mm. would you say your trust shifted a lot within that moment? difficult to pinpoint to a moment, so it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's a series of moments, probably. Um, but once you yeah, get to the stage, you mean the, the, trust in, the trust in myself, or the trust in what I do? Or? Yeah, the trust in yourself, and even, yeah. even like, I know you mentioned the trust in others in terms of your, yeah. your giving and receiving, you know. Yeah. I think it has started to shift. It's not quite where I wanted to be yet, but I, I get, um, well, obviously, it's often kind of this, um, the more intense or the more stressed we are, the, then it, it, it's yet another challenge, right, to prove what we've learned on a different level. And I think that has changed. So, uh, moments where I would have been stressed in the past, I'm not stressed anymore and I can trust. And now it's just a whole new game. And that's also part of how the universe works, you're like, oh, I want to grow, yeah, well, then, you know, be careful what you ask for, because <laughs> yeah. you'll be challenged, so, I feel I have more challenges than before, um, and more frequent, but, um, but I just have more tools to work with them, and I don't take them so seriously anymore, I just know, and therefore, I say yes to your question, therefore, I know, okay, this is just part of the game, life is not about not having any challenges. Mm. It's just trusting that you always have the tools to deal with them. Mm. Excellent. <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. Um, again, that comes into the physical as well, you know, through that. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and my, you know, my, my surgery in that time just gave me the, mm, the faith of, hey, what if I can get through this, I can get through anything, so... And that's great because it gives you confidence. And um, so I would say you've gone through your ordeal, your ordeal there, which is, mm. you know, bringing what you've learned together and trusting yourself and knowing that you've had that trust in yourself. And, yeah. Um, and the reward was, you know, what you felt afterwards, you know, that feeling of complete trust and belief in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if we look at your road back, your road back and your journey back is all about, it's all about giving back, you know. Yeah. So, we've gone through our, we've gone through the original world, we've now gone through the unknown world, and we're going back again to the original world, and um, you know, you could say once you've reached step nine and you've got your reward, and you're starting to create the success, that you're already a hero in your own life, or you've already Create success, so you know it's already the end of your journey. Um, but I believe you're not a, you're not a hero in your life until you actually give back. And uh, yeah. you know we go on our journey to learn all these things, to pass our message on to others that are facing the similar challenges and obstacles that we faced in our life. Yeah. Um, so if we look at stage ten, which is obviously our road back, and the road back is, as I said, looking back on. Looking back on all of your challenges and obstacles, looking back on your ordeal, looking back on, again, your original world and what you were facing back then, and um, thinking about what you're doing now, and 
If I was to ask you what you do now and why you give back, and why you do what you do, um, that's a big part of the self-reflection stage. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So what, what would that what would that be for you? Um, probably because, um, you know, like you said, I want to share with people my experience. So I don't believe everybody has to go through the same experience to get to take some learnings from it. So if I can help people have understand, for example, um, that whatever they go through really matters and and it is important to share that you can do business in a different way, you can do business with compassion and you can be really driven and very successful and still have have a life that you enjoy and still be kind to people. So that's definitely part of my message because I work a lot with leaders, with people who have a lot of impact. Mm. But also, um, when I look at the speaking and the thought leading, mm. um, to... Well, to, to help people have kind of that, um, help them discover that what they have to say matters and that they all have an idea worth sharing. Um, and, and it, it's interesting because it's not entirely, completely linked to, you know, you could say my journey should be about taking care of yourself physically or managing your energy or something. And yeah. I've tried that and I, and I work with that, but it's not my ultimate calling. No, that's fine. That's fine. I, and, and, I, and I think that's fine because I, I, that's the conflict I've always had with this, my hero's journey or, you know, my own journey and what I do now. I didn't have that big challenge of, speaking in public, but I, I think it's also not about that. It's not about speaking in public. It's about being who you are and being okay to... I think at the core, my message is it's okay to to bridge the different worlds, the world of being a successful business person and the world, the spiritual world and the world of um, knowing that there is more to life than, than what appears to the eye. And that you can do, you don't have to hide that, and you can do it in an obvious way, which is not airy fairy, you know, on your AG. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm along the, the yeah. same line to that. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. But imagine, like, the, the public speaking was, you could say, in some respect for you, was it, um, was it natural for you? Or did you feel like, feel like it was natural? It's, always, it's always been natural for me. So I don't have a mess to success story in that. It's always been natural. And that's, I think it's also okay because then it is sharing something that, that I was given. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me it was more, what I learned a lot was going through the fact that um, in order to, to reach people and impact them, it's just important to be authentic and to, to discover who you are and embody that. And that we all, we all have the power to shape the journey forward. It's not like only, you know, some sort of somebody designed that and then you live that and that's your life. If you don't like your journey, go change it. Definitely, definitely. And don't yeah. refuse any calls as well, because yeah. I think, um, for me, like, the, this whole journey, the, or the hero's journey, is uh, every step is a choice, you know. Each and every step along your journey is a choice, um, and it's a choice of stepping into your fear. You know, that's why I think this the quote that I mentioned earlier is so poignant. On every stage of your journey, like it gave you fear to enter holes to treasure you seek. You know, if you go there, you'll find the treasure. But you've got to take that step. You've got to take yeah. those steps and stages. You know. um, so we look at stage 11, um, I'd say stage 10 is obviously looking back as I said, but stage 11 is the mastery of two worlds, um, and the atonement, um, like, if we look back at Joseph Campbell's work, where it came from, it, you know, coming from mytho- mythology, coming from religion, um, and the similarities from all of those stories, um, Look at those religious figures, and the, you know, um, a lot of them had a death and resurrection. And uh, I would say, in our journey, we have a death and resurrection. 
you know, but more more so an emotional death and resurrection. Like I wrote an article that was all about stripping back, um, stripping back naked um, and living in your naked authenticity. Um, and for me, that was like stripping all of what you knew before, or all of who you were before, and really now stepping into power. And um, the mastery of two worlds is now that you know, now you know where people are on their journey, and you know where they want to be, and you can help them bridge that gap. Yeah. So, so as a client or business, um, even those people that, I mean, you can help them go through the public speaking journey, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you can see where they've gone, see, see where their discomfort is. You know, and uh, you can transform them through that. You know, because you can see where they want to be. You know, yeah. Okay. The mastery of two words is really important. Um, but again, it's looking, it's looking at, you know, how you identify with those people in the original world, and how you identify with where they want to be. And I, I think this is where like uh, business stories come into play. I think mm. this is why I say. If you can write a business story based around your hero's journey, then I, I believe it's much more uh, relatable. Um, you know, you can connect with clients a lot easier. And you're seen as a hero in your own life because you've gone through the journey that they want to lead. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where the um, the atonement comes in, the death and resurrection, you know, the return of the Alexia. And... Um, yeah, in the mastery of, mastery of two worlds, you can see the world through two sets of eyes now. And, uh, and now you're truly given back. Um, yeah. And stage 12 is a, is a simple one, which is uh, the return home. Um, which, uh, in Lord of the Rings, Frodo, Perkins, and uh, Samwise Gand, you get home. And uh, back at the Shire. <laughs> yeah. So it's, that's just a pleasant stage. Um, of the fulfillment and the... the the success that you get from giving back. Yeah. And if I was to ask you, how does that feel like now that you're giving back in a way that's natural and authentic to you, but is really transforming others' lives? Hmm. Um. How does it feel? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. 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 I mean, it feels empowering. Um. And, uh, you know, it's kind of this, it's, it's not this mega excitement, it's more kind of this very rounded off, yeah, I know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. And the expression may change over time, but not the essence of it. Yeah. So, yeah. you can have different programs, you have different kind of different ways of working with this to the outside world, I, I may call myself differently, um, but what I do at the essence is really right. So, would you say it's like the feeling of contentment? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, that's a, I would say that's your journey in the story. You know, that's your yeah. your hero's journey in a nutshell. And um, you know, I think hopefully that's brought you some clarity. Thank you. Yeah, I did. I took uh, a few notes, um, not too many though, but uh, yeah. uh, a few notes. I'm going to ponder about a few things, and and also see how it's reflected when I talk about myself. You know, it's so easy to help others talk about themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, you know, they did for yourself. But, um, yeah. Well, thank you so much. That was really interesting, really nice. You have such a, a calm way of guiding. Uh, Guiding someone through is really nice. Um, really I think this is my path and journey. You know, this is what I've, I'm here to do. You know, in a strange way. You know, um, yeah. but no, I, lo- I love it. I love hearing people's journey and story. And you know, I've, I've heard some pretty, you know, pretty horrible ones initially. You know, but once, uh, once you hear their transformation, it's incredible. But you know, just. Just hearing the difficulty that they've gone through, you know, at the start of their journey, is, you know, yeah. it's not good to watch, but you, it's, it's difficult to listen to, but once you hear the transformation, it's incredible. But, yeah. uh, 
Well, I was going to say actually, this is um, this has actually become a package of mine now, because everybody that I speak to, because I usually just do this with um, you know, people that have come on my show. Okay. Um, but a lot of people said that it's so valuable that I should do it as a service. So I wanted to ask you yeah. a feedback. What what would you think of it as a service? If I was to offer it this to you as a service, like. You you offer like a ninety ninety minute session or something on that, or what would you do? Yeah, it's literally just what we've gone through then. Then, um, so yeah. ninety minute session. Um, yeah. Uncover your journey and story. Yeah. Um, helping you like bring more clarity to your life and what yeah. you do, but at the same time unlock some of the challenges and blocks that the unconscious blocks that you're facing. Because mm. um, mm. I believe they always come up in your journey. And it's just. Yeah just reflecting on them so that you can, you know, unlock those blocks with, with maybe a coach or a therapist, you know. Um, yeah. So the, like, the question is for me, like, is, I mean, definitely you can even put that into a package. The question that, it's in how does it fit into your, into your product suite? Um, cause so you, you have your group coaching program, and then what's the next stage? If that was a small package, what's the next stage of coaching that you offer? Three uh, months or six months? Or? Uh, yeah, it's just the three months at the moment, so uh, yeah. three month coaching program. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I like, I like that. Um, to have kind of a deep dive um, in 90 minutes, and then at the same time, obviously you're going to, uh, uncover for some people some areas for growth where they now want to go deeper and that is then the upsell possibility for a longer package. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, a lot of people have said it's quite, kind of very much a spiritual process that I go through. Yeah. Um, would you, um, what would come with the package? Would you take, would you give people notes afterwards or the recording, or how are you going to practice that? Uh, yeah, I was, I was going to record it, or keep the recording and send it to them afterwards, and um, yeah. I'll probably have a follow-up call, so, so yeah. a 90 minute, and then a half an hour follow-up call, which would, yeah. which would, because a lot of people, when they, when I go through the whole journey, they they often find themselves quite overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah. Um, so it's, yeah. it's that self-reflection, looking back. Yeah. And, I'm going to think. And there's some sort of PDF handout that goes with it, and I think that would be helpful. What you showed me earlier, you know, maybe a couple of um, pages yeah. with that. Yeah, I could do that. That would be good, actually. But, uh, yeah, I think that, that will really add a lot of value. Yeah. Also something you can copy, put into your pricing. You know, it's just Because then it's not... What you, what you want to avoid is to sell a coaching session. You want to sell the outcome. Yeah. And package, and then and then the, the the talking to you is part of the package, but it's not everything. Because you don't want to say, oh, this is how much you charge for ninety minutes. It's not you charge for the process and and for the outcome of it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm. Um, yeah. I'm glad yeah. you've done it. Good, and if, good if, good if, good. you know, I mean. Feel free when you put something together in writing before you put it out on your website. I'm happy to read through it quickly and give you, give you my feedback. Well, I've got some on my website already, but I think I need to. Okay. I think I need to. Um, um, yeah, it's very, very loose at the moment in terms of. I know yeah. what I'm giving people, but it's just. Yeah, it's a bit loose, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. But I think it's so if there's anything I can support you with or you want some feedback or reflection, um absolutely happy to return a favor. No, I'd, I'd really appreciate that, so thanks. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about my 12 months, 12 week program now, actually. Um, the, yeah. So I, I didn't even know what to call this session, to be honest. Um, yeah, but that's what I've called it, Hero's Journey, Uncover Hidden Blocks and Regain Your Purpose. So... Um, and it's three hundred twenty-five dollars. I thought that was a bit high, but no, no, no. Is that good? No. It? That's not high. That's not too high. Okay. It depends on how, how the rest of your program 
programs is, is a certain... Is that for the package or for the group coaching now, what you said, this 325? That, that's literally for what we did today. What you did, yeah. Yeah, if you add the handout with it and, uh, and a follow-up call, I think that's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. And my group mentoring is one nine no nine nine seven for one to one. Uh yeah. three two five for group, which is probably too cheap. That's too cheap. For twelve weeks? Twelve weeks, yeah. No, that's too cheap. Have a look at my um did you look at my group coaching program? I've been uh, on that, but I don't know. No. It's it's a different learning page. I've not connected them yet because I I tested something uh um separately. So it's when you go on your 